Stayallday.com. Right now, listening to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves anybody out there, especially yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And we put all this together into one philosophy, one framework. We have codified this entire system so you can follow it from top to bottom, no matter who you are or where you are coming from. We have a hardcover book on the subject. We have a university that has open enrollment right now, and you're listening to the Daily Masterclass. Is that enough for you? That is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Happy New Year. Welcome to the new year, 2021, everybody. And today, what I'm going to tell you is the most important thing that you can do in this year. What's the most important thing you can do in this new year, this new opportunity, this new situation that we have when the calendar flips? Understand that what I'm going to share with you here today, technically, you could do this anytime. You could do this on March 15th. You could do this on January 31st. You could do this on August 12th. You could do this on October 5th. It doesn't matter what day it is, but because this is the new year and often people use the new year as a prompt to make changes and do new things and make adjustments to all of our games and whatever game and we're all in multiple games, make adjustments to our games to take our lives to hopefully a better place on a higher level. This is the perfect time to talk about it. It's a good excuse to take stock of our lives, careers, environments, and everything else at the beginning of a new year. Now, while I know this audience, the people who listen to this show, you're the type of person who is already driven, you're already focused, you already have goals, you have things that you wish to achieve, and you're working on them all through the year, all 12 months of the year, and maybe you turn your nose up and, and snicker at these people who at the beginning of January, they join the gym, and then they set goals, and then they're motivated, and everybody's all excited, and any of you who goes to a gym, you know the first month of the year, the gym is all crowded because you got all these these newbies who show up in January, then by March, you never see them ever again. I understand that some of you, since many of you who listen to this, you're already driven. And you're like, well, the new year doesn't have to be the reason that we do this. But understand, it is still, you had to agree, it's a good excuse to say, all right, let's take a look at things. Let's, let's figure out where we're going and how we're going to be doing stuff. And especially those of you who are in business, maybe this is just your, your fiscal year, your financial year. So you really, tangibly, you need to do this and really look at what you have going on. So today... I'm going to give you the key thing that you can and will focus on for 2021. I'm not giving you a list of a bunch of different things. I want to give you one specific thing that I want you to focus on for the year 2021 throughout this next 12 months. And when you get great results from doing this through the next 12 months of this year, you're going to love it so much and it's going to become a habit for you. It'll probably be an unconscious habit by the end of this year. If you actually follow what I'm going to share with you, then you will continue to do this through the rest of your life, of your life, because you're going to see the positive benefits that come from it. So now have I, have I, uh, have I, what's the word that I'm looking for here? The word is escaping me. Every now and then this happens. Many words I speak here on the show, but have I enough? Have I satisfied in whetting your appetite to get you to wonder what the hell this thing is that I'm going to talk about? Hopefully I have. So that means you're going to keep listening. I bought a little bit more of your time. Let's keep listening. Let's move right into it. Point number one, topic once again, the most important thing you can do for yourself and your success in the year 2021. Here's the answer. We're, going to, we're not going to bury the lead here. The answer is people. That's the answer. People. I.e., let me be more detailed. What I mean when I say people is getting the right people around you and the wrong people away from you. This is the most valuable thing you're going to do for the year 2021. Why is this? A lot of reasons. We've given a whole episode to this exact topic. One reason off the top, and this is something that I've said to you before, but I'm going to say this again. I'm going to reiterate it, and I will say it again in the future. You can get more done via the right relationships than you could ever get done on your own. There is only so much any one individual can get done. I find myself to, I would categorize myself as a very driven individual, a disciplined individual, a hardworking individual, a focused individual, a hustling individual. But there's only so much I can do personally myself. I only got two hands, two legs. I can only focus on one thing at a time. At, at a time. I can only be in one physical location at a time. There's only so much that I can do. There's only so much bandwidth that I have as one individual person. However, when I get the right people around me or I make the right connections with people who can do things that maybe I can't do or they can do it better than me or they can do it in my stead so I don't have to do it, I can get a whole lot more done under the umbrella of me, even though I'm not necessarily doing it myself, 
but I can, I get some benefit from it. I get a lot more done through other people than I can get done just by myself and my own hard work. Because I personally, if I'm being smart and I'm applying the 80, 20 rule to my life, I should be applying 80% of my energy to the things that produce 80% of my results. I should be applying most of my energy to the things that produce most of the results. And therefore, that's not everything. Nobody's great at everything. Nobody gets most of their results from everything that they do. We get most of our results from a few small things that we do. This is the 80-20 principle, Pareto's principle. 20% of the inputs equal 80% of the outputs. So when you know what those 80% outputs are, your question is, all right, what is the 20% of what I'm doing right now, holistically, that I really need to focus on? And then focus on that. And that 20 should become 80. You understand what I'm saying? So if you spend 20% of your time lifting weights and lifting weights is producing 80% of your result, then you should figure out how can I focus 80% of my time on lifting weights instead of 20% of my time. That doesn't mean lift weights the whole time. It means lifting weights and other things that support the lifting weights, but is not taken away from it and taking time away from the main thing that's producing most of the results. All of us need to be doing this and people having the right people around you with the right skills and the right mentalities and the right attitudes can change everything for you, especially those of you right now who are lone rangers, those of you who are lone wolves, those of you who are solopreneurs, those of you who are just out there pretty much doing everything on your own. You don't have a, you don't really have a community around you. You don't have any like-minded people around you. You haven't found anyone where, with which you have, with whom you have synergy and that you feel like you're doing everything by yourself. And maybe, listen, if you're talented enough, skilled enough, hustle enough of a hustler and disciplined enough, you can get a good amount done doing everything pretty much by yourself. And I'm a testament to that. I, got, I did a whole lot of stuff by myself for nearly a decade, and I got a good amount done in the professional sports world and building my brand, you know, creating what has become the Work On Your Game Incorporated business. And most of it, I was doing pretty much by myself. Every now and then I hire a freelancer or meet somebody, something like that. But the majority of the work was done by me. And when people will reach out to me and say, damn, Dre, who created your products or who designed your book or who does the formatting for this or who does your website? I would take pride in saying me. I did it. <laughs> I did all of that. And it was absolutely true. It was no lie. It was all facts that I did all of that. But that same mentality that had me doing everything by myself and the pride that I was taking in it, in it eventually became tactical hell because I was doing everything myself. The same thing that made me feel great and proud was the same thing that was causing me to feel buried under all the work that I was doing because I was doing everything by myself. So again, to reiterate the point that I'm making here. I'm still on point number one, the topic once again, the most important thing you can do for 2021. You can get more done via the right relationships than you will ever get done by yourself because you are only one person. I don't care how good or strong or uh, focused you are. And the flip side of this coin, the wrong relationships can hold you back and hurt you despite all your discipline and hard work. Any of you know what I'm talking about with that? And understand that these people that I'm referring to here, when I say people is the most important thing you could do for 2021. These can be people that you learn from. These can be people that you listen to, people that you become friends with, people that you work with or work for. You just need to be associated with more of these right individuals, whoever they happen to be. Understand that this alone, just understanding this concept alone and you actually applying it, not just understanding it, but applying this concept will do more for you in this year than all your individual hard work would ever be able to do for you this year. If you didn't talk to anybody and just focused on just you and all you did was work, there's a certain amount of success you will accomplish, a certain amount of success you will achieve because of how good you are, what you're working on and all that. But if you were to get the right people around you and still do your hard work, and again, you wouldn't have to do all of the work yourself because you got some of the right people around you who would help you, advise you, refer you, you would get a lot more done. You probably get at least 10 times more done with those people than you would by yourself. Why? Because this is just how it works. As they say, if you want to go fast, you go by yourself. You want to go far, you bring people with you. So this is, the, this is the, the giveaway. I'm giving it to you here. This is the point. People is the most important thing for 2021. Well, let's talk about this a little bit more. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is the most important thing you can do for the year 2021. We got five points I'm going to give you here. Number two, in one of my favorite books, now, I don't even know what my top five would be right now because I've read so many books. I'm not even sure what would be the top five. I think Robert Greene, I think at least two or three of Robert Greene's books will still be in my top five, 48 Laws of Power, the 50th Law, 33 Strategies of War. But I don't know who would take those other two or three spots in that top five. There's so many books. But one of them that would damn sure be a candidate and it would 
be very hard to leave this one on the cutting room floor. My top five is a book called Good to Great by Jim Collins. And in this book, and what the book is about, I've talked about this already in one of my favorite books episodes, but the book is about studying publicly traded companies and finding what made certain companies become amazing while other companies either stayed okay or they completely fell off the map. And even though the book is based on studying publicly traded companies, which is not what I am or nor I don't think that's what I'm planning to become, the concepts of the book, many of the principles can apply to even an individual person who is not even an owner of a business. That's, that was the great thing about this book is that the principles can apply to anyone, even if you are not the specific subject that the book is covering. And that is actually one of the best compliments I can give an author is, or anybody, anybody who's sharing information is that even if your principles are not specifically about X type of person, that X type of person can still learn from it and take those same principles, those same uh, value the same value out of it and they can apply it in their own way. So in Good to Great, Jim Collins introduces this concept of who, then, what. This was, this was probably the most valuable concept that I got from the book. There was one other called the Hedgehog concept, which is about what does your company do best and only focusing on that, doubling down and tripling down on just doing that. I would just rank those two one and one, one and one A as the best two things I got from the book, Good to Great. Again, this concept is who, then, what? What does this concept mean? And how does it, what does it have to do with today's topic? It is when you get the right people on your bus, wherever your bus happens to be going. Maybe it didn't even start moving yet. It probably shouldn't start moving until you get the right people on it. When you get the right people on your bus and the wrong people off of your bus, that's you and your goals and where your plans and where you're planning to go, then you figure out where you're going to drive it. This is the whole concept. And I love this concept so much that I dedicated an entire episode to it. And you can listen to that by going to episode number 1178. First, who, then what? I actually took the exact concept and made a whole episode out of it. Again, you can listen to that by going to drealday.com slash 1178 and put a little dash right after it. The number that is right next to the, the key that is right next to the zero on your keyboard. 1178 dash, first, who, then what? When you have the right people around you, you will figure out the how of any ideas that you and those people decide on. And you'll be glad to decide with them because you know you got the right people around you. See, when you had the right people with the right energies, with the right attitudes, it doesn't, yes, the skills matter, but the skills don't matter as much when you got the people with the right attitudes and with the right approaches. Because the person with the right attitude and the right approach, you can teach them most of the skills that they're going to need. Maybe there's a, some skills, maybe in a 10% realm of skills that you need somebody who actually has that skill and everybody can't pick it up. But somebody with the right attitude and the right approach, 90% of things that they need to learn skill-wise, they will learn and they are capable of learning. They had the potential to learn it and they're open to learning it because of their attitude. The attitude matters more than the skills. As a, the cliche, old cliche says, your attitude determines your altitude. Any of you who's ever worked with other people, whether you played a team sport or you worked at a job or you had people working for you or you worked for other people or you had people that were on the same level as you, you're all working together, even in a family, in a community, anywhere. So everyone has dealt with other people. Let me ask you, have you ever dealt with somebody who had the right skills, but they had a attitude that just did not work with the rest of the group? And you were like, even though this person is so skilled, it'd be better if they weren't around because they're actually bringing down the group, despite the fact that they might be one of the most skilled people in the room. You've been, you've been in that situation before, haven't you? Have you ever been around a person who wasn't that skilled? They didn't really bring that much tangibly to the table as far as their ability to do whatever. But because they had such a positive attitude, because they had the right type of energy, they stayed around and they were one of the most valuable people in the group, despite the fact that they may have been one of the least skilled people in the group. Any of you know a situation like that? Maybe you have been that person. Maybe you're thinking of a specific person right now who fits that exact description. Attitude can take you further than ability. Ability matters. I mean, you listen to a show called Work On Your Game, so don't get it twisted. Ability absolutely matters, but the right attitude can do what the right ability sometimes cannot do. And sometimes that can flip. Sometimes it's vice versa as well. Let's be clear. But as far as today's topic goes, because any of you who doesn't know me know, understand that I'm a type of person who will, I can and will argue both sides of any type of way of looking at things. So I will tell you on one episode that Sometimes you got to be the loudest person in the room. In the very next episode, I tell you that sometimes in life you need to shut the hell up. And both of them are true. It's just a matter of you having the wisdom of knowing when to apply which. So what I'm telling you today, as far as today's episode goes, 
is the right attitude can take you further than the right skills. And as far as you personally go regarding this topic, people with the right attitude will help you more and help you go further than finding people with the right skills who might who don't have the right attitude. People with the right attitude who may not necessarily have the skill, you can work with them. All right, y'all will figure it out. Why? Because they got the attitude to do so. But the person with the right skills and a bad attitude, they are the most dangerous person to ever have around you because the worse their attitude is and the more skilled they are, the more they can destroy you because they're so good at what they do. I've had teammates coming from you know, the sports world, playing basketball, who were really skilled, really talented, may have been the most talented player in the gym, may have been the most talented players on the team, but because they didn't have the right attitude, despite the fact they were the best player, they were actually cancerous to the group. And the fact that they were so good is what made them more cancerous because the fact that they were so good is what made them have influence. Now, see, if you got a bum ass person on your team who has a terrible attitude, you can just get rid of them because they have no skill. They're not bringing anything to the table anyway. So if you get rid of them, what are you losing? Nothing. But if you got somebody who's really good and really skilled and they have a bad attitude and you get rid of them, well, first of all, you're losing all the skill that they bring to the table. And secondly, the longer you keep them there on the other side of it, they are having more and more influence on everybody else in the group. So they're actually bringing the group down with their negative energy. So you lose either way. So this is the, the double dose of venom that you get when you have a person with a bad attitude and skill at the same time in a group. But when you get the right people, you figure out who the right people are. Then you say, all right, now we got all the right people in the room. What are we going to do? All right, we're all together. What can we do? What can we make happen right here? We got all the right attitudes now. Now what do we do? With the right people, you can figure anything out. With the wrong people, there's not much that you'll ever get done, even if everybody has skill, believe it or not. And it's, it's funny that it works that way, but it does work that way. It's kind of a, it's a counterintuitive way of looking at life. And this is why I'm here to share this with you so that you can uh, think about things differently or get some insights that you otherwise wouldn't have gotten or remind you of an insight that you had before, but you just haven't been applying it. I'm looking at you. Point number three, today's topic, once again, is the most important thing you can do in the year 2021 for yourself. The answer is people. Here's point number three. Here's the question for you to start really focusing on who are these people and where do I find them? What do you need in your life and who has it? That's the question. What do you need in your life and who has it? Two part question. That question and the answers to those questions. This is an insightful question because you might not have ever asked yourself this. And sometimes in life, insights come from asking yourself the right question, not necessarily having the right answer. Once you start playing with this question, it will direct your attention towards where do you need to be looking? And then when you start finding the right people, that's when you can start focusing and figuring out how do I get around these people? How do I get these people around me? How can I get some of whatever they have to rub off on me in some way, shape or form? Maybe there's more than one possible answer. Right? Maybe you, there are multiple things that you need in your life, and maybe there are multiple people who are able to supply those different things. It doesn't have to be one person in your life. I'm not telling you get one person. This could be 20 people you get around. Maybe it could be a group of 100 that already exists. You just didn't know about it and or you weren't a part of it. But when you get in it, now you got the right people around you. So ask yourself the questions. What do I need in my life and who has it? The key point here is you are not trying to do it all on your own. Again, I'm saying this again. Do not try to do everything by yourself. What you need in your life, if you need graphic design in your life, do not go to canva.com and start graphically designing stuff because you're not a graphic designer. It's going to look like shit. Even if you think it looks great, well, it looks great to you because you're not a graphic designer. Go find somebody who has those skills. Do not try to do everything yourself. All right, if you're a hamburger maker, don't try to make ice cream. If you're an ice cream shop, don't try to make hamburgers. Do what you do best. Find people who do the other things that are better at it than you. Enjoy doing it more than you then they will produce better results than you. I mean, isn't that what matters here? Because we all know that we're in a performance and a results-based business. Don't try to do everything on your own because if and when you do try that, you will either run out of time because you can't do every, you don't have enough time to do everything or you'll run out of talent because you just don't have the ability to do everything. You'll probably run out of both. And there are people out there who are better than you. They can do it in less time than you. They can produce a better result than you. They can perform at a higher level than you anyway. So why would you Take away from the thing that you do best by trying to do something that you don't do best. Therefore, you're not spending more time on what you do best. You are costing yourself inefficiency. And 
you're doing something they're not even good at. Why don't you go find somebody who's good at it? Find somebody who can do what you can or what you don't want to. They love it. Everybody wins. They get to do what they love. You get to do what you love. Everybody participates in the upside and the synergy of people working together. Point number four. Today's topic, once again, is the most important thing that you can do for yourself in the year 2021. The answer is people. And I'm explaining. I'm giving context to what I mean by that. Number four. Here's a note on when I say getting the wrong people away from you, getting the wrong people off the bus. Wrong people does not necessarily mean bad people. So when you're looking at your life right now and listening to what I'm saying, maybe there are certain people you thought of when I say get the wrong people off the bus and you're looking at them and saying, all right, this person is definitely not a match for me. Maybe this is what Dre is referring to. But then you're really looking at that person when you really start to think about it and saying, well, this person's not a bad person. I mean, they don't have negative energy. They're not trying to hurt me. They're not trying to stop me from getting where I'm trying to go. And I want you to understand that that person, that you're coming up with those rationalizations for their presence, that's the exact type of person that I'm talking about that you need to get off the bus. You need to get rid of that person. If you need to make rationalizations with yourself about why this person is not that bad, that is the exact reason why they need to get the hell off the bus. Why is this? Because a bad, when I say a bad person, I don't mean bad in just in a general sense of, again, that they're a negative person or they're going to bring negative energy into your life. It's just that bad, mean, I mean that in a relative term, relative sense. They're bad for what you're trying to do. They're bad for where you are trying to go. They're not a fit for where you're at right now. In the sports world, I had good basketball players who played on teams that I was on that couldn't play on our team, not because they were bad players, but because they were just bad fits for what we needed. There were times when we had basketball teams and we would go play pickup basketball and we would have players come play with us where, for example, uh, the team that we used to play when we would go play five on five pickup, it was three of us who were all we were all really tight, the three of us, and we were the guys who scored all the points. We were the guys who got the ball. So any of the other two guys that we would bring with us, because basketball is five on five, for those who don't know, we would need two other players. When we would bring players who were like role players, these are the kind of guys who were just happy to be playing with us. They knew they weren't going to get the ball that much. Their job was to play defense, grab rebounds, set screens, and if they happen to get the ball every now and then, go ahead, do something with it, but you're probably not going to get the ball that much. And they were happy to be in that role. They worked great with our teams. But if we, had, if we were to pick up two guys who thought they were stars, two guys who thought they were as good as we were and they wanted to score as many points as we did, it didn't work. The chemistry was completely off because those guys wanted to do what they wanted to do. And they were better players than the role players we were bringing other times. They were in a vacuum. They were much better. They were much more highly skilled, much more talented, just had more potential in basketball than the guys that worked great with us. But the thing is, for our team, they were a bad fit. So sometimes in life, you have people around you who are good people in general, but it's just a bad fit for what you're doing and where you're trying to go. You have to be wise enough to understand that and mature enough to get rid of them. Sometimes we have good players who are bad fits and average players who are great fits. And in life, that's just how it is sometimes. Everybody, everything is not for everybody and everybody is not for everything. And that's okay. Sometimes there are good people that I come across who I can't do business with because they just don't fit what I need on my end, even though they're good people. They just don't match where I'm at and what I'm looking for. So for you, getting the wrong people away from you does not necessarily mean that those people are losers. It doesn't mean that they're negative people. It just means you already have uh, noticed that these people by now, uh, they're just not the right type and they just got to go. And you know when you're around people who are not the right type, your instincts are telling you this. The problem for many of us is that we don't listen to our instincts because we have been so conditioned to consciously rationalize and come up with rationalizations and stories that make situations that we know are not ideal okay for us, and we stop listening to our instincts. But understand your instincts are still there. You just got to tell your conscious mind to shut the hell up so you can listen to them. Getting the right people around you is about being selfish. And being selfish empowers you to be unselfish. And how is that? The more selfish you are, because success is selfish, the more selfish you're willing to be, meaning getting the wrong things away from you so you can get the right things towards you, will empower you to do what you do best and create more success, create more results. And as you create more success and results, now you are further empowered to be unselfish and do things to help other people. That's how it works. But you got to be selfish first in order to be unselfish. Again, as far as this conversation goes, now there may be another conversation on this very show where I tell you the exact opposite and understand that they are both true. 
Yes, they are contradicting each other, but they're both true. They're actually only contradicting when you're thinking that you need to live everything by the book, quote unquote, of what somebody is telling you. And yes, the things that I'm telling you are accurate, but understand that they are accurate in their own sense based on the situation that we're talking about, not just in every situation in life. So you have to learn how to apply these when they do matter and not apply them when they don't matter and when they are not applicable to the particular situation. That's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And I did a whole masterclass on that exact topic. Let me give you that episode so you know where it is so that you can uh, follow up on your own. That is episode number. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> Let me find it. All right, no, I don't even see it. Here. I know I have it in here somewhere, but I didn't title it the way that I'm looking at it. But anyway, that episode is somewhere in here. I'll tell you about that in a second. Let's move on to point number five while I go for that. Today's topic, once again, is the most important thing that you can do in the year 2021 is, point number five, within yourself, you must become that right person. When I tell you to get the right people around you, understand that it's not just about those people having a certain type of skill or those people having a certain energy. It's also you having that certain energy. It's also you knowing right, that I have the kind of energy that other people want to be around. Other people are making the same evaluation about you that you are making about them. So ask yourself the following question. Are you a person that people want to keep around? Or are you a person that people want to get rid of? And if so, why? If someone wants to get rid of you, maybe it's for something that you don't want to change. Maybe someone wants to get rid of you because you're always pushing to go further and they are okay with the status quo. You should be happy with getting thrown out of that group. Maybe you're the type of person that people want to keep around because you're always pushing to go further and you're not okay with the status quo. You should be glad to want to stay in that group. So sometimes you're not a good fit for someone and that's a good thing. That's okay. Again, everything ain't for everybody and everybody ain't for everything. Maybe being discarded is the best move for you right now. Right? Any of you ever been fired from a job? And maybe you are a little bit shocked and devastated when it first happened. But in the long run, you're like, you know what? It was actually good that I got fired from that job. Sometimes getting removed from a situation, and it wasn't even your choice to get removed from the situation, could be the best thing to happen to you because it frees you up to go do other things. Now your, your space is open. Your resources are available for you to go look at something else that you otherwise would not have had the resources to go towards. So maybe being discarded is good for you. Episode number 1364, I talked about rejection marketing. Sometimes in life, you want to reject people away so that you bring the right people in. But the people who get rejected, it might have been a great thing for you to reject them so that they didn't come somewhere where they didn't belong. And sometimes people need to reject you so you don't stay somewhere where you don't belong. But for those of you, but for those for whom you would be a great choice, make sure you're not missing that opportunity. So make sure your game is in place. Make sure your skills is in place. Make sure you are doing all the things that you need to do so that you're in the right space when people make their evaluations about you. So those knowledge episodes that I was referring to. Episode number 252, the difference between knowledge and learning. Episode number 1440, we talked about frameworks, how to organize your knowledge. Episode 1383, knowledge is not a race. Episode number 1010, how to build your personal brand on commodities. When you're talking about like information and knowledge in episode 924, where to get knowledge outside of school. And also 259, personal power, aligning emotion with knowledge. So understand that just because you have certain information does not mean you should apply it just with a blanket everywhere that you go in life. If you are only, if the only tool that you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But understand you need an entire toolbox. You got to know when to use which tools at which times. And that requires a little bit of thinking. All right, that requires a little bit of mental effort. That doesn't mean just take a piece of information you heard from anybody. I don't care where you got it from and who said it. It does not mean it applies in everything that you do in life. You have to think and know when to use something and also when not to use it. Let's recap today's class, which is the most important thing you could do for the year 2021. You could do this anytime, but since it's a new year, it's a great excuse for any of us to come up with some new ideas. So I'm going to leverage that excuse and tell you, number one, the answer is people getting the right people around you and the wrong people away from you because you will get more done via the right relationships and connections than you will ever get done on your own, even if you have all the skill, all the talent, and all the hustle in the world. Point number two, Jim Collins said, and good to great, and I said in episode 1178, first who, then what? Get the right people around you, then figure out what you're going to do and how to do it. Don't ask yourself what you're going to do, then try to find the people. No, get the people first, then figure out what you're going to do with the synergy of that group. You got the right people around you, you want their ideas. Point number three, the question then is, what do you need in your life and who has it? 
This will direct your attention. And when you get your attention in the right direction, then you can focus once you start finding the right individuals. You will run out of time or talent if you try to do everything yourself and there are people out there better than you. Go find them. Point number four, note on the wrong people does not necessarily mean that they're bad people. It's just not a fit for you and where you're at. In sports, for example, there are good players who just don't fit on certain teams because they don't fit within the chemistry of what that team is doing. It doesn't mean that they're bad players in general. They just got to get into the right situation. And sometimes a good person can be in a bad situation. Maybe that's you. Maybe it's somebody who's around you. You got to be mature enough to understand that. And point number five, within yourself, make sure you become that right type of person. Other people are making the same evaluations about you that you're going to be making about them based on today's episode. So are you a person who needs to be kept around or a person who needs to be thrown out? And why? Maybe being discarded is the best thing that can happen for you right now, like I talked about in the episode on Rejection Marketing 1364. But for those for whom you would be a great choice, make sure you don't miss your opportunity by not presenting yourself as that great choice for that individual. If you want to get around a community of like-minded individuals who are serious about working on their game, showing their games to the world, and creating a living for that game, whatever that game may be, you need to join us at Work On Your Game University. We are open enrollment right now. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre all day.